We've got John de Vries, um, who I oh, shouldn't say unfortunately, because at the moment he's in Tanzania. Um, he'll be doing the next presentation from BlackRock Mining. Uh, good afternoon, Africa Down Under. Um, this is John de Vries from BlackRock Mining. Uh, in, the, in this particular case, it's good morning from Dar es Salaam. Uh, this is the second year that ADU has been done under some form of lockdown and uh, I guess as per last year there's not too many Africans in Perth at this point in time so we thought we'd level the field and put some down under into Africa and uh, today we're, we're in Dar es Salaam. What I'd like to do today is just give an update on the project and particularly punch out some of the highlights that we've achieved in the last 12 months. So with that I'll just swim over to our deck and uh, take you through the deck. So BlackRock is the current 100% owner of the Mahingi Graphite Project. Mahingi is globally significant. We're ranked number two in reserves. We're ranked number four in reserve resources. Mahingi is a, is a long-life mine, and we characterise it as 16 years off reserves, 26 years off reserves and resources. But in reality, the way graphite works, we've probably only drilled the first 26 years of what is a 100-year mine particularly unique in that this is a large float deposit. So we're not reliant on the economics of just the battery theme to preserve the, the value of the project. This project derives its value from all of its baskets of products. It's outstanding economics and really um, it, it's a unique project. Our biggest shareholder um, is POSCO. Uh, most important significant shareholder is POSCO. Um, and, and POSCO have come on board in the last six months and have really made a difference to us. Not only are they cornerstoning us uh, economically, but they're cornerstoning us in terms of offtake. Now, Mahingi is, is, is unique in that it is a unique combination of both geology and geography. The geology gives us the large flake, it gives us exceptional purity, uh, and that's a function of, of just the dynamics of the deposit. But where it's located gives us access to grid power and rail transport to one of the deep water container ports on the east coast of Africa. And in, in a business where 40% of your cost to customer is logistics, having access to that deep water port is absolutely fundamental to our value. Um, we recently did a mark to market exercise on freight given uh, disruption on global freight. And at the moment, the, the cost of shifting a container from Dar es Salaam to China, which is where most of our terminal market sits, is around $240 a container unit. Um, so clearly that sort of advantage is, is just unique to this project. So uh, effectively, geology puts us at the top of the margin curve, geography puts us at the bottom of the cost curve, and it's that unique combination of geology and geography that delivers the outstanding economics of the project. While we say Mahingi is meaningful, we've been very careful about right-sizing the project so we don't overcrowd or overload any sections of the market. Now, we believe that at about 85,000 tonnes when Mahingi comes on, which will be towards the end of calendar year 22, start of calendar year 23, uh, it's going to account for about 4% of the global market. This is a global market that's growing very significantly. If you look at benchmark economics, they're, they're looking at something like a 30% year-on-year growth. But importantly, um, being able to come in there and not overload any one of your price points in a differentiated basket of products is really, really important. So Mahingi, it's a right size mine um, and it's, it's in the right section of the market. And I think you can sort of see there at the moment, China still is the dominant uh, player in the market, but very clearly there is a number of alternative sources popping up, and one that really stands out is that East Africa region of Mahingi, of Mozambique, Madagascar, and critically Tanzania is really starting to stand up as basically being the Pilbara of graphite. Now, Mahingi is, is unique in that our geology gives us a large flake, gives us a pure flake, which means that we're able to address all sectors of the market. Um, most of the, the Chinese material and, and, and indeed a number of our peers are really concentrated in the fine section. And that's driven by, by their metallurgical circuits, it's driven by the geology. And really that means that they're, they're in the refractory and in the battery space. We start getting into some of these other sectors um, it's much more difficult to get in, but the prices are much, much better. So typically where we're looking at refractories and batteries, 
prices at the moment are sitting around five fifty a ton US. We start looking at some of these other uses, and you're up to fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars a ton, and that comes back to a function of flake purity and flake size. Ideally, you want as much as you can in a large flake, but you have to take some fines. And we use a, a term in the, bar, in, the, in the graphite sector called a basket. And uh, at the moment, Mahengi's basket at 95% purity is around um, $1,000 a tonne. If I take it to 97.5, and we certainly can do 97.5 off our flotation circuit, we're closer to around about $1,200 a tonne, which is reassuring because it's consistent with the pricing that we were, we were looking at when we did the DFS back in 2018. Obviously, there's a lot of dialogue around um, the EV revolution, and we're, we're really at that point of being a tipping point where EVs have gone from being a, a Tesla, which looked like being you know, a pretty unique vehicle, to most of the manufacturers now are coming up with EVs and really coming up with a very, very differentiated offering. And an EV is increasingly being seen and perceived as being vastly superior to an internal combustion engine. I think the, the point that really comes out here is if you see this continued growth in demand, what we're looking at here is a really big gap that's beginning to emerge. And, and that comes back to a really important part of our business plan about building an 85,000 tonne a year module. Um, and then we can very quickly put another 85,000 tonne and another 85 and another 85. And that allows us to grow with the market um, and develop a very, very large business in a, in a progressive way and critically at not any one point in that overload our price point. So we're really starting to see this, this the rhetoric that we're looking at in 2014-15 roll ahead now and, and big demand in this EV sector. Critically, um, EVs accounts for about a third to a bit over a third of our business. Um, so again, we don't have all our eggs in one product basket, but this is a very important product basket and it's certainly moving ahead very, very quickly. So, you know, if you roll up BlackRock, why, why does BlackRock work and why does Mahengi work and what's unique about it? Well, firstly, the, the geology, this thing is big. And if you're thinking about um, EV manufacturers, you think about anode, um, these people actually have to physically modify their factory for your product. So one thing they want to do is know that you have a long life asset and you can produce a consistent blend. And we've done a lot of work around establishing a long life asset and being able to prove our consistency. We're very critical that uh, we've got low cost access to logistics. So again, we're at the bottom of the cost curve being able to supply our customers. And because we've got this unique basket mix of high grade, large flake, we're at the top of the revenue curve. Gives us a very, very good margin. Um, and gives us some really incredible economics. In terms of the geology, the geology is a, allows us a low strip ratio. We don't actually have an open pit in the conventional sense. We're mining down the side of a hill. So uh, we have a, a life of mine strip ratio of 0.5 to 1. And if you start thinking about where that sits in, in economics, it, it works in economics. We think about where it sits in carbon intensity. It certainly sits very well with carbon intensity. So it's a unique combination, geology and geography, um, and, and it just simply puts us in a position nobody else is able to be in. I think Kermit the Frog said it's not easy being green. Um, and uh, in graphite, it's particularly challenging. But if you think about how the ESG rolls up and it's increasingly uh, a differentiated product, uh, people don't want to buy a EV and say it's a green car and then find out that the supply chain's quite dirty. It's a very much like a blood diamond. So where we stand out here is low strip ratio, low deleterious elements in our flake really means that this is a clean, uh, chemically clean concentrate for our customers to work with. Um, we're able to dry stack our tailings because we have a coarse grind. So we're not competing with our traditional uh, agricultural, subsistence agricultural neighbours for, for water. Um, and critically, it's a low footprint on the tailings dam. So again, it's very, very good environmentally. We're able to access grid power, which is predominantly off hydroelectric, a very strong differentiator. So again, we don't have uh, a diesel power station operating a graphite mine. And simply when the, in the process, in, in the mill, very simple process flow sheet, um, and, and again, very, very low energy intensity in that mill. 
So it, it just rolls up and it's a benefit of the project, um, but we've been able to step back and say, well, how can we enhance those benefits with some pretty smart engineering? A business strategy is really simple. It's about build a right size mine and then use internal cash flow to bootstrap it to substantial size. And really what that differentiates us is, is it the opportunities we have in the market. We're an upstream focused operating model. That is, because we have enough margin our flake, I don't need to go downstream. I don't need to compete in the anode space to actually produce business. This business stands on its own two feet as a graphite business. Working with the Tanzanian government really actually comes out, and this is a bit of a, an eye-opener for me, but when I'm starting talking to ESG funds, they see an alignment between the Tanzanian government and us as a benefit. Joint ownership equals alignment of interests, transparency, so again, that really works very well in Africa, and ultimately, an ESG focus talks about a strong role in the country, so we actually become a, a true development partner not only for the mine, but for the nation. And that really matters to a lot of the ESG inbound investment. We're focused heavily on running pilot plants to produce product, and that allows us to secure customers before construction. And that allows our customers, A, to underline debt, B, to participate in the debt itself. So we have POSCO sitting there as working on a prepayment. We have two Chinese off-takers coming in on a prepayment. We also... Uh, we're working on Western off-takers who just require a bit more product off our latest pilot plant round, and we hope to bring those guys on. So effectively, our target is to have this thing 100% sold out before we start pouring concrete. Graphite is different to base metals, um, and, and the only way really to work out what you're doing with graphite is you need to run pilot plants. Now, we're on pilot plant three, so we'll have done over 600 tonnes of pilot plant work Put it in perspective, our current pilot plant on an annualised rate is about 7,500 tonnes a year. So it's about 1% of the scale that we're running at in terms of the final mine size. That allows us to produce real product. It gives us real qualification. And fundamentally, we don't have, we don't have opinions here. We've got data. And that allows us to make much better design decisions. And it allows us to validate the circuit before we build. Um, so hopefully when we start this thing up, there should be no surprises. And critically, the final part is about right-sizing these modules. A bit of a Goldilocks point here, big enough to be investable, small enough to be fundable, small enough not to destroy your price point in the market. And when you're ready, you put in some more ones, put some more modules in there. And finally, one module means one set of training manuals, one set of parts, and everybody knows how to run it and everybody knows how to fix it. It's about actually thinking ahead here rather than simply reacting to the opportunities in front of you. The graphite playbook is different to base metals. It's different to gold. Base metals, gold, drill it out, do the chemistry on your core and away you go. What you spend most of your time here in the, in the graphite sector is you need to do your pilot plant and there's an iterative run between draining the pilot plant, producing customer samples, qualifying it, you get feedback, you run another pilot plant, slightly different operating parameters, put it into your customers, and you keep going around this loop until you finally qualify. Mm -hmm. Our first pilot plant was 90 tonnes. Our second one was 20. Our third one is 500 tonnes. It's all about this qualification piece. Next part for us, which is unique, is working with the government, um, trying to, to understand how we might do the investment parameters here. Uh, and that's why I'm here in Tanzania working on that as we speak, um, because we're not going to get it done from Perth. The only way we're going to get this done is sitting here in Tanzania, in meetings, getting the job done. And, and that's what we're doing. Once we've resolved that, it's a very quick runway into financing. That's front end loaded. And then we move into construction. I said our objective now is that we, we, we really are beginning to think that we'll be wet commissioning towards the end of calendar 22. Financing is a really unique approach in Mahengi because we've been out there doing the qualification. We've been out there working with our, our EPCM syndicate. Between our, our customers who are prepared to prepay, and this is POSCO, two Chinese entities, our EPCM syndicate, which is China 7th Railway and Yantai, 
in a rough term, you can think about $50 million of deferred credits. It's a little bit like a Harvey Norman deal to kind of uh, buy now, pay later. Um, that's 50 million of a total project cost of, of 116 capital. Um, then the rest of it is effectively a combination of debt and equity. Obviously, we want to put as much debt as we can into that. And we're working on relationships in Tanzania here that allow us to access debt through Tanzania Investment Bank, National Microfinance Bank of Tanzania. And we want to match that with some of the South African commercial banks who really do understand how to do mine finance in Africa. So that allows us to, to bundle this together and, and produce a, um, a financing package that is more than just money. It's a finance package that everybody's participating in that helps mitigate the overall project risk. And I think that's a fairly novel approach to, to financing. So what happens next? Where, where to from here? Well, what's not on this slide is hopefully we resolve the, um, the government uh, free carried interest, and that's what I'm doing here, and uh, we'll, we'll be here until we actually get through that particular piece of work. But what we're working on concurrently is our engineering, uh, our pilot plant run, we're, 500, we're 100 tonnes into a 500 tonne pilot plant. And really, um, that's doing incredibly well at the moment. Our numbers off the pilot plant run three, um, currently sitting at about 96.7% overall grade. Um, and that's where we're targeting a grade of 95%. So we're actually struggling to hold this thing back. Um, we've got 95%, uh, but I have 95% now minus 100 fraction, which is the battery feed material that goes to POSCO. A bit over 91% recovery. And we're looking at about 61, 62% above 100 mesh at the moment, but we think we can improve that by increasing the density in our polishing circuit. So there's a lot of learning going on in that pilot plant. And then, like I said, I'd sooner spend the money in the pilot plant and get it right there than spend uh, you know, $100 million on a plant and learn how to drive that. It's much more effective to, to learn before you build. Um, we will go back and re-estimate that uh, product portfolio based on oxide. What we are finding is it's... Uh, milling a fair bit more than we expected. So uh, maybe there's some upside in the oxide port, but we'll, we'll work on that once we've completed the pilot plant run. We'll uh, complete our engineering estimates and that'll allow us to uh, commence financing on the basis we know what the maximum price is going to be and start an early works program. Offtakes, complete our Western offtakers, uh, complete the qualification there, complete the POSCO term sheet, if we need to, we'll rebalance the portfolio as on, on the basis of pilot plants. So we actually can allocate uh, products to customers who want them. And then uh, we'll take everybody from binding term sheets into full, full contracts. Finance starting position is that, you know, about a third, 40% of this is already spoken for. So it's not as though we're starting from a bare sheet here in terms of finance. There's real interest in debt funding. And there's real interest in debt funding because again, we have data, we don't have opinions. So we can talk about facts and that's something the bankers like. And, and finally, the, the real focus of what we're doing here is aligning the debt process with what works in Tanzania. Because we think, again, if we can bring Tanzanian financial interests into this, this gets back to the overall ESG benefit of the project. That is, we're building the economy more than just a mine. And uh, we think that's, that's a benefit to everybody. So... A bit of numbers again, this is how we, we put Mahengi together. Uh, 1.2 billion NPV. Three years after we calculated that, I can still mark the market to produce the basket price. So I'm very happy about that. 116 million buys you module one. Cash flow from module one buys you modules two, three, and four. All up, we end up about 350,000 tonne per annum. It's a 26 year mine life of what we've drilled out. So it's the first 26 years of 100 year mine life. Um, and we really end up with some stunning IRRs and NPVs and the rest of it, but it's about actually crawl, walk, run. And um, that's the key magic in, in this particular project. So why BlackRock? Look, upstream focus. We do not need to build anode to justify this project. This project works as a graphite mine. Our approach to anode is to collaborate, which is why we have a relationship with POSCO, it's why we have a relationship with Urbix. We'll mine, they make. We've done the right evaluation. You can't 
build a graphite mine on lab, lab results. You actually need to do substantial pilot plant work to understand what happens at pilot plant scale in, in your project. Out of that pilot plant, we continue to demonstrate that we've got 60%, 70% large flake, and that large flake is uniquely high grade, and that's got benefit all the way through the value chain, and particularly supports a price point that is well above market. Crawl, walk, run means that we bring on a sensibly right-sized module that doesn't overload our price point in the market. We've got a realistic view on price. We're able to mark to market and our contracts actually reference indexes. So we're actually transparent pricing and uh, you know, happy to sit down with anybody at any point in time and show you how you generate a price debt for graphite. It is surprisingly easy. We're the only mine that I know of that's got a railway going past the front door and it's got a high voltage power line going past the front door. And that puts us in a unique position that we have got the lowest logistics cost to customer of any blue water graphite mine. I think the, the execution plan fit for purpose, we're right sizing, we're not trying a gold plate or, or even cut corners and actually cutting corners is, is probably more dangerous than gold plating. And ultimately, I think we're starting to differentiate the, the concept of green graphite. You can't turn around and say, I'm building a great EV if your graphite mine runs off diesel power. You need to go the whole nine yards. And, and fortunately, we're able to do that. And our, our finance process, again, everybody brings more than just money. They bring the risking skills and, and they bring a unique component to the project that makes it work. And ultimately, I think that rolls up the superior stakeholder engagement and, and that's best demonstrated that I'm sitting here in Tanzania trying to, uh, to work with government to take this project forward. So that's uh, Mahingi Graphite Project. Um, thank you for, for listening. Um, and I hope you have a great ADU and I look forward to uh, hearing a few of the, uh, the presentations when I get round to, to listen to it. But um, that's John DeVries signing out from Tanzania. Thank you very much.